This is Scott Allen Miller, and today on Sam IT, we're going to talk about do I need two domain controllers? Well, that's a great question, and it's one that comes up a lot, especially in very small business. Of course, if you're in the enterprise and you're using Windows domain controllers, you're going to have a lot of them, just one way or another. So this only applies to the SMB, where we're so small that should we have one or more actually comes up. So the first question is, of course, do you need a domain controller at all? And in a lot of cases, you don't, but that's a separate discussion. Assuming you need a domain controller, that's Active Directory domain controller, and you're doing Active Directory for your environment, there is a tendency for people to believe that it's a best practice to always have two of them or more and this is not true at all high availability is never something that's a best practice there are best practices about implementing high availability but the actual best practice that applies here is that you always do the financial analysis and determine if high availability makes sense for your environment that's the actual best practice depending on the outcome of that analysis we may or may not need Active Directory to be highly available. And in the SMB, most of the time, the answer is actually that we don't need it. It's relatively rare, not super rare, that having high availability for Active Directory will be necessary. It's probably something like 60% of the time we don't need it in the SMB, but the more common case we certainly expect to be that it is unnecessary. Unlike a lot of things, doing uh, high availability with Active Directory always comes with a certain amount of cost simply because it's running on Windows and we're almost always going to have a large licensing fee tied to it. Not in all cases. That's why you need to run the numbers. It is possible that in your situation you already have high availability for other things, you already have licensing, and Active Directory will simply come along for the ride and you'll basically get it for free or almost free. In those cases it's pretty easy to justify it. Is five minutes of downtime going to cost you $20? Maybe. In which case, maybe you'll just implement it because it's just there, it's low-hanging fruit. But for the majority of SMBs, going to high availability Active Directory means that they may need to implement a second server, which may be a very cheap older server. They're going to need to manage it, they're going to need to power it, they're going to need to get a Windows license. That can add up very quickly and may, look, may turn into thousands of dollars over the lifetime of that system. So we have to really consider it because downtime caused by Active Directory easily will never add up to even a few hundred dollars over a decade of running a non-highly available system. One of the things that people tend to miss is they believe that Active Directory is highly critical and that having it down will cause your business to come to a stop. In some cases, that is true, that there can be a pretty tight coupling between other services and Active Directory. But in many cases, especially in the SMB, there is no such coupling. And you can test this, simply take your Active Directory offline, unplug the network cable, and see how many things stop working. I've certainly seen businesses that have gone for a month or more with Active Directory offline and never noticed, let alone been impacted by it. This is because in most cases, cached credentials will keep systems working and Active Directory simply is not needed on a regular basis. It will become problematic if you want to change passwords or update some information, but unless you're doing those things, you may never run into a case where you actually need it again, at least for quite some period of time. Things like password changes can easily be mitigated if we are going to have a downtime of say one or two days. Simply tell staff we have an active directory outage, we're not going to update passwords for the next 48 hours, do next business day hardware replacement, you're back up and running, didn't cost the company a penny. So it's important to run those numbers and understand how much doing high availability for Active Directory in your scenario will cost because it may be effectively free or may be relatively expensive. And you need to figure out what the impact of an Active Directory outage is for your business because for some businesses it will be dramatic and in many businesses it will be completely nominal or even non-existent. So those are not things that anybody can project for you only you can determine those two factors for your specific environment. That's why it is not possible to have a best practice around those specific things. You always have to figure out specifically for you. You can't look at anyone else's environment and say, well, manufacturing companies like ours do this, or companies of our size tend to do this. None of that applies. These are unique factors for your business and simple things like how you map drives, how you log in, how you couple an application will have big effects on what an outage may cost and simple things like 
how many licenses you've purchased or how you've deployed other applications may completely change the cost of doing this. So you have to run them for yourselves. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. And remember that in IT, where it's always about running the numbers. Everything we do or nearly everything we do is unique and we can't just take cookie cutter solutions. Active Directory is one of them. And uh, not only do we need or not need Active Directory, how do we need to deploy it? Thanks for joining me. Comment below and uh, let's discuss how Active Directory is protected or not in your environment.